How do I use elevators in FIRST Robotics? Elevators in FIRST Robotics have many different applications. You can use them to elevate game pieces to many times the height of your robot. You can also use them to lift your entire robot or your alliance off the ground, if the game calls for it. In this context, an elevator is a series of parallel stages that move linearly relative to each other. Some advantages of this are that you can get a very compact system that can go many times the height of your robot. In contrast to an arm, which will have to pivot through an entire range, an elevator stays very compact front to back, but the carriage only moves in a line. Sometimes you may want an arm that can pick up in front and score behind, but oftentimes an elevator will do a very good job at elevating a game piece or a robot. First off, you have to decide whether you need a single stage elevator or a multi-stage elevator. Single stage elevators like this one can only move the end effector from the bottom to the top of your robot's fixed height. They can't extend past the maximum height your robot starts at. Keep in mind, this doesn't mean you'll be able to reach from the ground to the very top. If your gripper is here, you'll only be able to reach to here, not to here. For chain and belt driven elevators, it's common to attach the run of chain or belt to the back of the moving stage, put a sprocket here and power it down here. And then as the chain moves, the stage will be able to move as the loop of chain goes around. If single stage elevators aren't going to get you the reach you need, you can put them inside another elevator to get a multi-stage elevator. Here we have a two-stage version. You can see the single stage inside of it that travels like it normally would, but then that entire stage can then continue upward using the outer bearings. Both our compact elevator bearing kit for FRC and our compact linear slide kit for FTC offer single and multi-stage options. The multi-stage options have slightly more complicated rigging, but we're gonna go over that now using the compact linear slide kit. This one is rigged continuously, which means there's a string that goes from the motor to the top of the fixed stage, down to the bottom of the next stage, and so on, until it's attached to the bottom of the carriage. This string segment tends to want to get shorter until it can't get any more shorter, and then the next one gets shorter, and so on, until the entire elevator is extended. Keep in mind this is one continuous string running all the way through the system and back down to the motor, so that when we power it down, that same string can assist with gravity and pull the elevator back down. Another option is cascade rigging. Much like continuous rigging, an extension string originating from the spool is rigged to the top of the base, running down to the bottom of the first stage. A second extension string anchored to the top of the base is rigged to the top of the first stage and anchored at the bottom of the second stage. This is repeated for all elevator stages. As the spool shortens the first string, all the stages move at the same time and the elevator will lift. The movement of the stages causes the string attached to the other stages to move along with it. In both these examples, it's important to make sure that your string is well tensioned so it doesn't slack or get caught up in other mechanisms. If you're an FTC, you'll almost certainly be using a Neverest motor, but the ratio will depend on what you're doing with your elevator. If you're just lifting a game piece, the ratio can be a lot faster than if you're lifting a robot, maybe even two robots. The higher the gear ratio, the more torque the motor will output, and the more you'll be able to lift, but the slower it will go. For FRC, you have a few more motor options, but the same general rules apply. You probably want to use a SIM or a Neo motor, as usually elevators are held at a height for an amount of time, and the other motors available aren't great at stall. If you're just lifting a game piece, your reduction can be a lot less than if you're using your elevator to lift your entire robot. Keep in mind the trade-off between speed and torque. Also remember 
that you're not just lifting your game piece, you're lifting the entire weight of the moving carriages.